Hi students, this is a reading to go along with week five of our distance English classes. This is a morning class reading, which is a little bit higher um, vocabulary and difficulty level for grammar. If you are listening to me read this story and you are feeling this is too much difficult, um, go over to find the matching reading for the afternoon class, which is a little bit lower in vocabulary difficulty. Listen to the story that is slightly easier, then come back and push yourself by listening to this story, which is more difficult. Um, if you are not a member of my English class, don't worry. Follow along with a notebook, pen, paper, write down any new vocabulary that you find in this story. Um, practice putting that vocabulary into sentences. Always leave me sentences in the comments under the video. I will be happy to give you feedback uh, if the sentence works for grammar or not. And make sure to like and subscribe to my channel so that you will get a notification when a new English practice video is ready. Let's jump into this story. This story is called City People and Country Folks Have Different Types of Germs in Their Home. And this article is a little bit older. It is from February 24th, 2016 but still relevant and interesting information inside of this article. This was written in Washington, D.C. Whether you live in a jungle hut or a high-rise apartment, your home is covered in tiny bugs you cannot see. They are bacteria, a kind of germ. Some bacteria make people sick. Some bacteria are good for people's health. That said, a new study suggests you still might want to open a window. Moving to the city. A team of scientists traveled to South America to study the bacteria in people's homes. They wanted to know which bacteria were in small village homes and which were in big city homes. They especially wanted to know how urbanization affects the kinds of bacteria inside people's homes. Urbanization is when a large number of people move from farms and villages to urban areas like cities. When this happens, everyone can see new buildings being built. What people cannot see are what bacteria are in those buildings. This study was led by Maria Gloria Dominguez Bello. She is a scientist and a teacher at New York University. Her team found that as people live in bigger and bigger communities, the more the bacteria in their homes change. For example, in cities, there are less bacteria that are found in nature and more bacteria that typically live on people. If walls could talk. In fact, in city homes, the scientists could tell what kind of room they were in just by the bacteria on a wall. They could say, this is a kitchen, or this is a bathroom, or this is a living room. Dominguez Bello said. As she puts it, the walls talk through the bacteria on them. Everyone carries their own set of bacteria on their skin, in their nose, and in their stomach. This group of bacteria in one place is called a microbiome. Some of these bacteria are good and some are bad. The good bacteria help people digest their food and fight off illnesses. The bad bacteria might make them sick. What you eat, what medicine you take, and where you live can affect the balance of good and bad bacteria inside you. Dominguez Bello's team focused on studying how people's homes affect their microbiomes. Studying germ populations. The scientists studied the sets of germs in 10 houses from four different places in South America. Two of these were villages in Peru. One was a jungle village and one was a farming village. The other two places had more urbanization. They were the medium-sized city of Iquitos, Peru, and the larger city of Manaus, Brazil. Peru and Brazil are two of the largest countries in South America. They are also right next to one another in the northern part of the continent. 
the people in each country are similar to one another, even if they live in different places. The people in each of these four places lived in different kinds of homes. Large families shared open-air jungle huts with no outside walls. Homes in the farming village had walls, but they did not reach the roof. City homes were larger with walled rooms and smaller families. Fresh air and diversity. The scientists discovered that the homes with the most human bacteria were the ones in the cities. Even though these homes typically had less people living in them, they had many bacteria on their walls and floors. The more crowded jungle and village homes were different. They were filled with more bacteria commonly found in soil and water than with human bacteria. The team reported that the walls of city homes were acting as traps. They were holding on to germs that people shed. Meanwhile, the jungle and village homes without walls allowed air to move more freely through them. The moving air helped reduce the number of human bacteria. Dominguez Bello could not believe what she learned. When she returned home to New York, she made her office building unseal her windows. She no longer wanted to be in a place where she could not open the windows to let the bacteria out. How was this story for you? What vocabulary, what words were new for you? Leave new vocabulary in a sentence in the comments under the video so I can give you some feedback. Until next time, students. Bye.